taste, Sandy. What you doing there? I'm making a spice mixture to use in my cooking. It's going to be exactly one half salt and one half pepper. Okay. I'll measure the salt and you measure the pepper, okay? Okay. Sure. So one, one and one. One and one. Okay. One teaspoon exact. Okay, i make sure it's Put exact. Put it in there. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, my fingers are all over there. I washed my hands, though. All right. Start to stir it. Okay, that looks great. Okay. So tell me what's done. It's Look done. pretty good? I think so. Well, we've succeeded in making the spice mix because of act accurate measuring. Well, you know what this does? This reminds me of today's Bible lesson. You know, we will learn how Jesus showed his glory as God's son to three of his disciples, James, John, and Peter, at a place called the Mount of Transfiguration. Just like our spice mixture was 50% salt and 50% pepper, some people think that's how Jesus was while he was on earth. Half God's son and half human. But that's not true. Jesus was 100% God and 100% human when he lived on earth. Find out more about this fascinating topic when you join us today for D6 at FCCO. <laughs> Today we are going to learn about an amazing event that was witnessed by three of Jesus' disciples, James, John, and Peter. Although this event took place on what we call the Mount of Transfiguration, we have here with us in our studio one of the eyewitnesses of that entire event, Peter. Welcome, Peter. Thank you for having me, Sandy. I am so uh, blessed to be here. I want to begin with some questions to find out what you experienced and your reaction to what you saw. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm really I'm so happy to be able to share this with everybody. Uh, it was, it's truly awesome. Okay, uh, can you first tell our audience who was with you at this event? Uh, yes, uh, so Jesus took James, John, and me uh, to climb up on a high mountain to be alone with him. And, and that's a really, like, I don't, I don't know if you know, it's a really special thing because there are so many people that are, are gathered around Jesus every every single day. Know. You know. I had no idea how special this trip was going to be until I actually saw Jesus. He changed the way that he looked to us. I mean, oh. I had seen Jesus do so many, you know, miracles, but when I saw him change the way he looked, um, I, I knew he was the Son of God. Oh, wow, that is intriguing. What did Jesus look like when he changed his appearance or the way he yeah. looked? Yeah, Sandy, that's, that's, that's like hard to describe, you know. You know what he exactly looked like. Uh, I mean, his his face shone bright as the sun. Oh. His clothes were like white as light. I mean, can you imagine that white as light? I mean, he was blinding but beautiful at the same time. Mm. Uh, and then just like that, there were two more men with us. It was wait. Are you saying that all of a sudden there were two men with you on the mountain? Uh, y yes. Um, it was. Yeah, it was this. It was Moses and Elijah. Oh my goodness! Uh, they were standing right in front of us, talking to Jesus. And I said, "Jesus, you know, I didn't know what to do. Jesus, this is so wonderful. I, I love this. Let's build three shelters: one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah." And, and then, and then while I was talking, this bright cloud came over us. Like, wait a minute! There was also a big cloud all of a sudden on the mountain. Yes, but it was what we heard, not saw, that mattered. God himself said, this is my dearly loved son that pleases me very much. We listened to him. Wow, you actually heard the voice of God. What happened after God spoke? Well, we were all kind of, uh, not kind of, we were scared. We immediately fell face down to the ground. And I'll never forget Jesus' hand as he touched me and said, get up. Don't be afraid. And we looked up. There was only Jesus standing there. Well, did you make the three shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah? No, 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 of course not. I, I understood that God's son, Jesus, is more important than any shelter I could build to honor him. Uh, he's more important than Moses or Elijah, and God used Moses to save his people from slavery in Egypt. God used Elijah as a prophet to preach God's way to the people and, and show them God's law. But Jesus is the most important of all because he is God's son. What Jesus was about to do for you and for me, taking the punishment for our sin on the cross, was more amazing than this event. 
Did you say anything? Um, did Jesus say anything else to you about this event? Yeah, as a matter of fact, he did. He did. Can you share it with us? Um, well, when we were going back down the mountain, Jesus told us not to tell anyone about what we had seen until until after his resurrection. And we'll get there. Okay. All right. It was, um, and it was so hard because I wanted to tell everyone what I had seen, but I did what Jesus said. I, I didn't tell or write about it until later. But I tell you now, I never, never got over what I saw with my own eyes on that mountain. Seeing Jesus in all his honor and glory. And I never got over hearing the voice of God calling Jesus his dearly loved oh. son and how much he pleased him. Oh. Well, thank you, Peter, for answering our questions and for sharing this eyewitness account from the Mount of Transfiguration. Your words help all of us get a bit of a, a sense of what happened and how beautiful and amazing it must have been. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for having me. And it's my prayer for, for all of you that you never get over the excitement of what Jesus did for you. Thank you all for joining us today for this very special interview. Jesus changing his appearance to show himself as God's son in all his glory and magnificence is known as the transfiguration. Peter and those with him never got over what they saw. One of the things God said to the disciples on the mountain was how much Jesus, his only son, pleased him. But God also said to listen to Jesus. This involves not only listening to his words recorded in the Bible, but also listening to others speak his truths, like your parents, our pastors, and our Sunday school teachers. This week's Bible verse is Hebrews 12.2. It goes like this. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, he endured the cross and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It tells us to look to Jesus. He can help us get through hard times. It also says that Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God. We can celebrate that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus suffered through his time here on earth, but he always focused on God. Faith begins and ends with Jesus. He came here to earth to follow his Father's plan. So when we look at Jesus and what he did for us on the cross, we see how much he loves and cares for us. He is the example of faith. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus, your son, whom you love and you are well pleased with. And I pray that you would help us look to him and his way of life, the way he had a relationship with you. God, help us to follow that example and, and to listen to him, his words and his actions. God, what he did here on earth. God, uh, strengthen us to be followers of Jesus. It's in Jesus' awesome and powerful name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week for D6 at FCCO.